Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we'll be discussing one of the most important concepts as it relates to human anatomy, and that concept is what we refer to as anatomical position. So what is anatomical position exactly? It is the reference point for discussing and describing body parts, especially as we compare the positioning of one part to another. In essence, having this same reference point allows practitioners and clinicians an opportunity to speak the same language. So while we're here, let's describe anatomical position. It involves standing in an upright posture, facing straight ahead, the feet being parallel and close together, and the palms out, open, and facing forward. And as shown to the left, we are viewing anatomical position from an anterior perspective. And to the right, we have anatomical position being shown from a lateral perspective. Now, let's clear the board and discuss why this is the reference point for us to refer to in all things anatomy. When we refer to anatomical position, we're essentially referring to everything from the patient's perspective. For example, if we wanted to refer to the young lady's right leg, we might be tempted to point here because it represents our right if we're looking at her directly. But unfortunately, this would be wrong because everything in anatomy is based on this concept of anatomical position. We need to consider viewing everything from her perspective. Therefore, if we were to ask her to point to her right leg, she'd point to this one. Now, with this in mind, let's label and discuss some terminology that we use to refer to the human body. Now that we've got her right and left covered, let's label that on the image that we have. Here's her right, and of course, here's her left. Next, what we have is the midline of the body. And what this does is provides us another reference point to refer to additional terminology. First, it allows us to use the term medial, which refers to body parts or segments that are close to or are moving towards the midline of the body. Comparatively, it allows us to use the term lateral to refer to movement of body parts or segments that are away from the midline of the body. And next is the term distal, which refers to movement that is away from the center or midline of the body or away from a point of origin. For example, we could follow along the arm and move towards the forearm distally, and we could also start at the knee and move downwards in a distal direction. Comparatively, we have the term proximal, which refers to movement that is close to or moving towards the center of the body or a point of origin. With these terms, we can also refer to movement that is either superior or inferior, in this regard, superior means that a body part or segment is above or that it is higher than another structure. Now, we can also utilize the term cephalic here as well, which primarily means towards the head. And with the term inferior, this refers to structures that are lower than or below another structure. With the term inferior, we can also utilize the term caudal which has the same meaning. Now, moving over towards the lateral view of anatomical position, we can utilize some of the same terminology we've just discussed. First, let's denote the terms superior and cephalic, along with inferior and caudal. And next, we can also make note regarding the terms proximal and distal. And lastly, it's helpful for us to label the anterior portion of the body along with the posterior portion of the body. And with the term anterior, we're referring to the front of the body, and we may oftentimes hear the word ventral used as well, which refers to the front or towards the belly. And with the term posterior, we're referring to the back of the body or the posterior surface of a body segment. And you may also hear the term dorsal as well, which has the same meaning. 